and I went through a lot of issues after our separation. But you know what? Nothing is impossible with God. Yeah. And the thing is this, let me just share what happened during all this period. 16 years is a long time that he left the States and he, did his, he went through his life, I did, went through mine. And the consequences were very strong in the sense that my children suffered those consequences. Sometimes we forget when we're in sin, when we forget how much we hurt other people in the process. But you know, again, God is always there to heal those wounds for us. Now, when that moment in my life came, I was searching, and he came back to the Philippines like he mentioned a while ago and was preaching the gospel, and everybody thought he was crazy, and I for once started my crusade against him and just to find the reason why I had left him, that he was crazy. That's why I left him. But what happened in my search that I had asked God, I want to have what he's got. Whatever it is he's doing, it's not fair. I was part of all that mess he put me in. So maybe you can save me the way you saved him, whatever it is he's talking about. So one day I did attend a concert. It was a Christian concert where they had Eddie as one of their speakers and singer. He was sharing a testimony and I walked into that room knowing that everybody was looking at me, but then I see I was still carrying the mask of being a movie star. And sometimes you forget and think you're on top of the world because you have everything, popularity. And the truth was that I was hiding behind, behind the mask. I was so much in pain and I didn't even know it. I was hiding behind vodka in the evenings when I would come home to just hide my pain. Then that night, I went back to the condo where I was staying at. I had left my house in BF. My children at this time were living on their own. And I asked God, why is it that I'm feeling this feeling at that moment in that concert? Because I was reading the tracks that were on the table. That concert was entitled Out of Bondage. And he spoke about God's mercy, God's grace, and how he died to save us from our sins. And it is only by his blood that we are able to go to heaven. <clears throat> I didn't understand it all then. But for that one little moment in that room, I suddenly felt a very strong feeling towards Eddie, like I was that young girl that had just fallen in love with him many years before. Because we were married for 11 years before our marriage broke up. It started getting too crowded, Pastor. There were too many ladies around. <laughs> but you know, it was all about being young, I guess, being popular, and uh, you know, how everything works when you're in the world of sin. Right? Without God in your life, everything is not easy. The devil is always there, like a roaring lion, right? But anyway, that day I went back to the condo where I was staying in, and I was feeling this thing, and I looked at Eddie, and I was looking at him, like I said, like a love uh, struck teenager that I was when I first met him. So I asked God, why is it that I'm feeling this way? Because I was searching during this time, and I was asking, the God that I thought I knew, if there was anything in my life that I needed to know, please help me. And I had surfed through the channels one evening and I saw the 700 Club and they were talking about being born again. And I said, this is exactly what Eddie has been talking about. So again, going back to this concert, I just won't, see, I'm running out of time. I have only five minutes, right? So I'm just gonna try to make it short as possible. Anyway, that evening in my condo, I got down. And I asked God, I said, why am I feeling this way? Is this all part of just an emotional moment because of what's happening tonight or whatever it is? If so, I need a sign from you. Why don't you give me a sign? I said, like, maybe if I should get white roses before the end of the week. This was about Tuesday, early morning of the Tuesday. I said, if I get white roses before the end of the week. But then again, I second thought, maybe even just red roses would be fine. But the color white has to be the sign that's important for me to know that it's coming from you. And that you mean that maybe if it is that, then that means that you really want me to go back to Eddie. That this sign is coming from you, right? So as long as there's white. So anyway, I was doing a movie at that time. I was working and my brother had just arrived from uh, Sydney. They live in Sydney and he had just arrived with his wife and his daughter. And uh, they had come to this concert. And that was one of the reasons why I had to attend it, because they were there. And so that day I asked him to come over to my set, because during this time I was going to give my niece with a uh, 
gown for her debut. And in those days, you know, you have your private couturier and you have your makeup artist with you and, you know, it is in showbiz. And so I had mentioned that I was going to send the driver back to them and they would come to my set and the couturier would come and I would gift her with this gown for her debut. And so my brother said, they were staying, by the way, with Ed at this point because I was living in a one-bedroom condo in Makati because I had rented out my house during this time. So I had no place for them. So I had asked, I had asked Eddie if he could excuse me, host them because this was the period when Eddie was already starting fillers, you know, sending uh, little notes to show that he probably wanted a reconciliation of which I really didn't want to give him a chance until this moment. Okay, all right, so he, my brother says, uh, Eddie wants to get, up, uh, wants to talk to you. So, like I said, that evening I was love struck again. So I said, yes, put him on. When before that, I would always say, tell him to stay away from me. Don't uh, let him come to the set. And my children would often even say, please ask dad not to come to the set because he's talking to everybody about being born again. And he's so embarrassing. And, you know, people are working and all this. And so I would call Eddie and I would really lambast him on the phone and stop doing things like that. You know, anyway, oh, this is fast. <laughs> So what happened then at this point was that, okay, when, no, Edward, please. <laughs> no, I was more concerned that they're all waiting for me. And okay, how many more minutes? One more minute? One more minute. <laughs> feeling this way, you know, I'm still very much out there in the world or whatever. Why am I, oh, I should even tell you the story and how I walked towards that ballroom in the Peninsula Hotel in Manila, if you've ever been there. You know, it's a big ballroom, a little bit bigger than this one. And I was, I came because I knew my family was going to be there, right? And uh, so I, I asked the ladies at the, con uh, at the reception, I said, I believe Eddie Mesa has uh, reserved a table for the family, so where is this table at? And I thought, you know, I still believe on myself as a Star. So I walked in there and I said, okay, eat your hearts out. So you know that I made his wife for two cares, you know. So I just really walked towards the, the, the end of where the table was, like I was the uh, supermodel of the year. <laughs> anyway, so then I, uh, that moment, to be honest, Pastor, I don't even know if I should share you. I'm going all the way now with this thing. But anyway, so I, um, I, uh, I, I, I uh, sat down. I used to smoke still, then, you know. So I walked through that, uh, uh, oh my God, he's really doing it. He's really doing it, oh, okay. <laughs> so what happened? Mary, <laughs> sorry? <laughs> Go ahead. So anyway, I was walking through this ballroom and, and then, uh, gosh, I don't and so I, I, I was smoking, like I said, so I sat down and I first thing I did was to grab my cigarettes, my security blanket, because I knew they were all born in, in Christians and friends and whatever, and then he had been in the, and he had been in the, uh, in the, um, in the uh, uh, working as an evangelist uh, in the ministry for nine years before we got back together. So he was doing this for nine years, and during those nine years I was hating him, right? <laughs> More so because he was wherever it was he was doing out in the boondocks. You know, and once upon a time, this was a man who really loved cars and loved everything money could buy. He would travel here and there. And he had a harem of ladies around him all the time, you know, and swimming, swooning over him and things like that. So what happened in that day it was like, I was building my confidence in a wrong way, you know? Like, I'm a movie star, so who cares about everybody else here, like I said. Anyway, so that evening when I went back, I grabbed my cigarettes, and every time the pastor would speak, <laughs> the people around me would go, praise the Lord, you know. <laughs> praise the Lord, amen. It's like, what the devil really has to be left and right, and what is happening with these people? What a bunch of crazy fanatics, I was saying, you know. Oh, they're all extreme. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I used to say. <laughs> I used to say that, but then that's what I was. So I, I sat down and like I said, every time I would hear like a spoon would fall or a foot would fall, I would hear, praise the Lord. And I would go, what is the connection with that? <laughs> it was totally turning me off, if that's the word for it, you know? And I was bumping my spoon towards them. You know, I was just... <laughs> 
really showing them. That's how mean. <laughs> That's how much I thought I owned the world. <laughs> See, it's embarrassing, isn't it? And anyway, so now really God has really good, uh, brought me through a journey to prove me of all of these things that I was carrying that actually was just what depriving me of every joy that you can go through in the middle of trials because they are their trials. Your being a born again Christian does not deprive you from trials. We will go, we will go through trials. And if I told you mine, you wouldn't think I would still be here. But by God's grace, you know. And that's why I have this joy to speak to you today because it's a testimony in itself of what I have been going through this time until the Lord has brought me here. And to think that I have my granddaughter, unless she's not here anymore. And that I, she has been so close to me since he was a little girl. She's Mark's daughter. The second one. And she gives a mycelia. If this has not been orchestrated by God, I don't know how else this could happen. Who would think that at this point in our life, if you knew what we were going through, that we would come this way? I never knew. We never knew about your church. We've been going around for what, 10 years. I have been with Eddie in the ministry when we reconciled. But now I'm jumping a little more because I wanted to tell you about the roses. <laughs> I said, okay, give me the sign. Remember the sign that I left off? As long as you have something white around it. So that day for work, okay, so the car, the car came, and so Eddie got on the phone, and he says, where are you going to be at? I said, I'm going to be shooting at this place and whatever, and, you know. And so he says, can I come? Can I come? Ask, when before, I would probably have said, no, don't you dare. That day, I said, yes, please do. <laughs> so maybe we can go out to dinner. He says, I said, well, that'd be great. Okay, so we all went. They all came to my set, but not Eddie yet, my brother. Before I ended my last shot in the movie, they came up to me and said, you can leave already. We can't do, we can't do the other scene anymore. Oh, I said that my car is no longer here. I already sent my car to pick up my brother. So I have no choice but to wait. Had I gone, had they told me this before, that, before then, I would not have would not have been there when Eddie arrived. So the thing was that that's how it happened, right? So they came, we did this, the, the, the thing, and during this time, Eddie arrived. When Eddie arrived, I didn't know that he had something behind his back. So I introduced, I was uh, introducing him to the people around me, and then he handed me, I was sitting down. Well, that's why he wanted me to sit down. <laughs> We wanted to have the complete production design. <laughs> no. Okay, so anyway, so I was sitting down and Eddie was like that. So to make it short, he handed me the roses. And I looked at those roses and they were the red roses tied with a big white satin ribbon. <laughs> This is it. <laughs> this, is the, this is the sign. You know that I was asking. This was my own at that time. In my, yeah. Whatever way I, I believe God, right? So th that was what happened. So that evening, I told my brother, I'm going back to Eddie. It looks like Eddie and I are getting back together. And my brother said, that's the best thing you could ever have said. So please fell into place. And we did go back 16 years after we were separated. So at the very beginning, Pastor, you know, Arlene, I was like, I didn't understand much about the whole thing, especially the fact that when we were coming to America for the first time on a crusade that I was going to attend with him, and they started talking about love gift. So I called love gift, okay, now let's name it love gift. What in heaven's name is a love gift? I said, you know, when you're in show business, you're used to just signing contracts. <laughs> I feel that the last day. Give the last day. You see, 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 see. Okay. contracts, where are we going to stay? Where are we going to stay? You know, at the barbecue and the whatever. You know, that's 
why you get this, you go through life thinking you have it you have it all made. And that's not where it's at. <laughs> So, so that's what happened. So I had to get used to this. And it has been a struggle in my life because at that time, at the beginning, Pastor, I used to hear him say, and the Lord took me away from show business. So I was still doing TV shows. I was now doing character roles and acting because that was a bread and butter. So for a while, remember, I have just been a big Christian and I'm still growing. Every single day of our life, we still grow. And it's only great to know that God's mercies are new for us every day. <laughs> so, or whatever at that point, it was like, so what are you saying, Eddie? <laughs> After all these 16 years we've been apart, now we're back, and I have to be working, and you're going to be just me with my love gifts? <laughs> but you know God is so good. <laughs> It's not been that easy. Like, you know, just buying anything that money can buy, but God has blessed us all the way. There are struggles, but He never fails to meet it at the last minute. At the last minute, it's always there. And many times I go, oh, please, Lord, please. Either, Lord, please don't fail us, or, Lord, I'm sorry I forgot about your faithfulness. So it's like that, but like God's grace. I couldn't just leave without sharing this. Because I just mean, thank you so much. You know, part of that also, as I was talking about my granddaughter and her family, we just lost our son. Uh, I don't know if you have the TFC and the GMA channels, the, you know, Filipino channels. Our son, Mark, passed away last uh, September. So we are still in a grieving stage, and it's not easy to lose a child. I'm sure a lot of you have heard already, we don't bury children, we, they bury us, right? So this has been a big trial for me, and every time I go through that, I break up. But I'm not gonna touch on that now, because the truth about it is that again, it has been a testimony for me. I mean, to tell you, that in the midst of this trial, I don't think there's anything else that can hurt more than that, than losing a child. It's like, especially from us mothers, it's like your soul is being taken away from you. It's being ripped out of your body. But you know what? I used to say, Lord, for a while there was anger. For a while I was saying, why? I believed in your healing. You said you can heal and nothing is impossible. Ask and you shall receive. I asked, how come you did this to me? Isn't it going to be enough that I've been working doing this to bring souls to you? Lord, why have you abandoned me this time? I said, what good has it been for me to tell them about everything that they ask for you? Always be there to answer if you have faith in I have faith and I believe that you're going to heal my son. You didn't answer me. For about three weeks, I was going through this anger. And soon after this, the Lord touched my heart one day when I just screamed out and said, Why? Are you going to leave me like this? For how long is it going to be like this? I'm going to quit this ministry. I'm going back home. I've had it. I don't want to be here no more. And suddenly a voice came and I heard it so hard in my heart. I did answer you, Rose. I did. I answered you with what was best. What is best for us? What is best for you? And I'm going to be there with you as I promised I would never leave you. No, for sake. And for that moment on, that promise has been true. He has been there for me. That's why I had to share this with you. So no matter what you go through, don't ever, ever, ever forget to cling on to those promises. That's all we got left for as long as we're on this earth. So life is short, like a paper. Today is here, tomorrow is not. But one thing is true. One thing is real. No matter what we go through, God is there. And you know that when everything is over, we will be face to face with Him. That's our only hope. That's our only hope. 
So thank you so much for my more than five minutes. I love you all. God bless you.